Hey everyone, this is Ryan here, and welcome back to our periodontic series. This video will be on prognosis and should be on the shorter side. My goal with this one is to help put everything that we've talked about so far into a more clinical perspective. So let's define prognosis. Prognosis is the prediction of the outcome of a disease. So prognosis is a prediction. They both start with the letters PR, which is how I remember it at least, and it's a prediction because we can't tell the future. But based on factors that I'll go over in this video, we can assign an appropriate prognosis. And the prognosis for an individual tooth must be considered in the context of the entire dentition. So if you've ever heard of the uh, see the forest for the trees analogy, which means don't get hung up on an individual tree, in this case a specific tooth, but look at the entire forest. In other words, look at the state of the entire mouth, or at least the upper or the lower arch, and see what state everything is in. Then you can look at specific teeth in that context. Do all the teeth have advanced bone loss, or is there just one exception? So that's important to think about moving forward. So a lot of these are going to be review, but I want to briefly go over a few factors that are used to determine prognosis. So for clinical factors, the patient's age is actually very important to consider. A younger patient with the same level of disease as an older patient has a worse prognosis. So what this means is that if you start out with periodontal disease at a younger age, you have basically longer to live, which means more time and opportunity for the disease to get worse. So it's worse if you have a disease at a younger age than an older age, but um, usually. Uh, clinical attachment loss is, again, more important than probing pocket depth because uh, clinical attachment loss is based on the CEJ, a fixed point. So that's a great measurement to use. Plaque control is important. Poor oral hygiene is going to make a big difference as opposed to somebody who's having excellent hygiene and removing all of their plaque. And this goes along with patient compliance. A patient who's non-compliant and uncooperative probably will have a worse prognosis on the whole than somebody who's compliant and cooperative. And vertical bone loss has a better prognosis than horizontal bone loss because it can potentially be treated with regenerative therapy, which we'll talk about in a later video, especially the three-wall defect. So a three-wall infrabony defect, we talked about in the second video on classifications, is called a trough, and it's the easiest one to heal with regenerative therapy because it has the most walls of natural bone to supply bone cells to get the graft to take. Systemic factors, we talked about smoking, uh, decreased healing and can cause uh, direct damage to the periodontal apparatus. And diabetes, in more recent literature, has been shown poorly controlled diabetes leads to poor healing and a worse prognosis for periodontal disease outcome. And also Parkinson's disease may not seem related. And how could it impact tooth prognosis in periodontal disease? Well, this neural condition impacts motor ability. And it can be much more difficult for a Parkinson's patient to brush their teeth without some assistance. So again, since plaque is the primary factor, the primary cause for periodontal disease, being unable to remove plaque means their teeth have a worse prognosis. In other words, we predict that periodontal disease will pro progress and worsen without some serious intervention going on. So we have local factors. These... Um, I've beaten to a pulp at this point, so we'll move on to anatomic factors. And you'll recognize most of these are features that predispose a tooth to frication involvement, which severely compromises a patient's ability to keep that area clean. Since the frication area provides a safe haven for plaque bacteria, and of course, plaque bacteria left unattended to will worsen prognosis. Also, tooth mobility, does a mobile tooth will not respond as well to some of the periodontal therapies we have. And lastly, prosthetic and restorative factors. These factors, while not directly related to periodontal disease per se, still impact 
the survivability and prognosis of a tooth. All right, so this lists the six prognosis categories. They are excellent, good, fair, poor, questionable, and hopeless. And I'd definitely be able to recognize these categories in order from best to worst for the board exam. Luckily, they make a lot of sense and um, they kind of, well, they just make sense based on what the category is named. And so our job is to determine which category is most appropriate for a given tooth. So you wanna consider the bone level, the tooth mobility, if there's furcation involvement, local and systemic factors at the patient level, and the patient's motivation and cooperation are also crucial as we've discussed before. If appropriate, you can even assign a prognosis to a whole arch or even to a whole mouth based on which one of these rows best characterizes that patient's teeth. So this chart is great and summarizes a lot of the things we've been talking about so far. So feel free to take a screenshot and study from this. Now, since there's only one question on the board exam that comes from periodontal prognosis, I would remember this singular fact from this video, that the clinical attachment loss is the most important factor in determining periodontal prognosis. It's the best measurement we have, and this question could certainly appear on the board exam, and um, maybe a, a little hint here might appear in the question video that I'll have up for the periodontal section. So definitely remember that clinical attachment loss is the most important factor. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I hope you found it helpful, and I'll see you all in the next one.